Hello boys and girls and everyone else. Welcome again to another episode of Science Video Lesson. And in this video lesson episode, we were going to talk about the most important organ system in our body. Yes, we were going to talk about an organ system in our body and that is the nervous system. All right, so today we were going to find out what are the different components of our nervous system, what are the parts and how these parts function together to form the nervous system that we know. All right, so come and join me everyone in this science video lesson episode and learn something about the nervous system. So here we are in our lesson for today. So if you are confused right now, why I am, uh, am I showing uh, a video game image that we have right here? So this video game image that we have has something to do with our lesson for today. All right, so... One that you are familiar here, which is uh, Dota, Dota 2. Alright, so in this game, um, this is a um, this is a massive uh, online battle arena. Okay, and it requires uh, team play. Alright, it, it requires team play and strategy. Okay, so the most important thing that you should accomplish in this game is to uh, destroy the enemy's flag on the other side so that you be able to capture the wheat, okay, for this game with your teammates. Alright, so the next one is a shooting game. Also, it's a team game. Alright, so it's a team play game. So this is Counter-Strike Go. And in this Counter-Strike Go, you, you will use different kinds of gun. All right, and shoot the enemy before the enemy shoot you. Okay, so you will use a lot of uh, strategy that you have right here in order to accomplish this game. So in order to accomplish this, you need to eliminate all the enemy um, enemy players. All right, so so that you will be able to um, win some money and or uh, in order to buy high powered guns. All right, so that is the. Uh, counter strike go okay so we have right here the starcraft which is a real-time strategy game now in this game in order to accomplish this game uh, you need to uh, gather resources as fast as you can and build an army as fast as you can before the enemy does all right so that's the goal of this game now what are common among these games that we have right here what are common among these games so these games require hand and eye coordination and thinking all right without these particular abilities or without this particular uh process you will not be able to accomplish any of these games that we have right here whether it is simple or a complicated game so all video games that is out there requires a lot of thinking all right and hand and eye coordination now uh in order to move your uh avatar Alright, so in order to move your avatar here, and in order to win the game, you need a bit or a lot of hand and eye or a practiced hand and eye coordination here. Okay, so what makes it possible? What makes hand and eye coordination possible? Now, that makes it possible because we have an organ system in our body called the nervous system. Alright, so this is the electrical system of our body, the electrical network of our body. It controls, um, there is one control center here and it controls all the body parts that we have in our body. Alright, from the eyes, from the hands, to, the, to your feet, and everything that is controlled by this organ system, the nervous system. Now, in this video lesson that we have right now, we will go to discuss the parts and function of everything about the nervous system. So, but before we go to that, let's take a look at this uh, organism that organisms that you have right here. All right. So, the organisms that you have right here, namely the sponge, the jellyfish, the flatworms, roundworms, cuttlefish, um, earthworm, spider, and starfish. Now, what are common among these organisms? These organisms are said to be invertebrates. Alright, so what are invertebrates? So, you can put your answer in the comment section below. So, what are invertebrates? So, invertebrates are animals that doesn't have backbone. Alright, so although some of them, or most of them, except for this uh, sponge right here, most of them have a nervous system. From the most primitive, 
down to the most complex in invertebrates. Alright, so the primitive one doesn't have brain but it has a uh, network of uh, nerve cells scattered around its body. Okay, so even though it doesn't have a brain like the one that we have right here, the jellyfish, it survived for merely 3.6 million years even without that certain organ which is called the brain in its body all right so that is very uh this is a very tough organism all right so down to the most complex one which is the spider okay so as you can see here the spider that you have right here is the only invertebrates that has a body division so it has a cephalothorax and we, ha we have here the abdomen and also we have here the appendages, all right, that uh, completes its body. So these are the body divisions. Now, as you can, um, if you have read, if you have read some books about body division, having a, a definite body division like a head, a thorax, and an abdomen gives you an advantage because a true head controls all the body parts in the lower extremity. And there is a, there is a place for the brain all right so when you have uh, a head for an organism automatically you can find the brain onto that particular part okay so it controls the thorax the abdomen and also the appendages so again these are the invertebrates the most primitive nervous system the jellyfish and the most advanced in the invertebrates is the uh, spiders or the insect uh, kingdom that we are insect uh, group that we have right there now we, we have now the vertebrates when we say vertebrates these are animals that have backbone so why do we, they have backbone because of one thing they have a complex nervous system all right they have a complex nervous system aside from having a brain they also have another part which is called the spinal cord Okay, so the spinal cord is the one that is uh, that is uh, the bridge between the brain and the lower extremities of the body. So in order to uh, perform, in order to make these lower extremities work uh, perfectly, there is a spinal cord attached through the through the back through the backbone. Okay, the backbone. Pro the backbone protects the spinal cord and this spinal cord controls these lower extremities of the body that you have right here on different organisms okay that we have or that that is belong to the vertebrates okay so uh these are the differences between the vertebrates and invertebrates organism all right so let's ask the question what are the components of the human nervous system what are, what are the said components of the human nervous system? Alright, so let's start first with the overall view. <clears throat> so the overall view that we have right here is the brain that we have over here, which is located on the head. Alright, so there's no organism. There's no organism out there that uh, the brain is not located on the head. It is always located on the head, not on the thorax, not on the abdomen or whatever. Alright, so we have here the spinal cord, the one that you have, uh, the bridge that you have right here, this long line that you have right here, and the series of nerves. Alright, the series of nerves that is attached both left and right of our uh, body. Alright, so, okay, so this is the overall look of our nervous system. Now, what are these? Although uh, it is very, it looks like a simple uh, organ system, but it has a lot of components, right? So these are the components of our nervous system. All right. So starting with the nervous system, which is uh, the electrical network of our body, it is divided into two divisions. All right. It is divided into two components. We have the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So furthermore, the peripheral nervous system is divided into two divisions. So we have sensory division, which is the afferent, also known as afferent division. And we have the motor division, or also known as the efferent uh, division of the peripheral nervous system. Now, uh, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system is under the motor division. And the parasympathetic and the sympathetic division is under the autonomic, uh, autonomic nervous system. 
All right, so we will discover this today in this video lesson. What are the differences between these divisions that you have right here? And what is their uh, importance? Okay. okay, having those different divisions. So to start with, let's start with the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is made up of a lot of complex network of nerve tissues. All right. And it controls the activities of the body. Not only it controls the activities of the body, it also processes the information all right, that was taken or that was gathered by the five sense organ. We have the eyes, the nose, the tongue, the ear, and the skin. So those five sense organs feed all the information to the brain and the brain process those information and be able to do certain reactions based on that information that is feed or that is uh, obtained by the brain itself, right? So coming from these sensory organs. And the two parts that includes the central or the two parts that are found or the two organs that are found in the central nervous system are the brain and the spinal cord, all right? So two of them, the brain and then the spinal cord, nothing else. So central nervous system is... Uh, responsible for controlling our body and processing the information so that it's it's a uh, function mean function so we have here the brain okay so the brain is uh the brain of a human is around 1232 grams all right so around that one or 1300 grams in an adult now in a newborn a uh, new human so it is around 320 grams all right so 300 to 400 grams all right so the african elephant is around 2000 or 3000 uh, grams all right so that's the size of the brain okay so we have here uh two parts of the brain okay the two noticeable parts of the brain that we have so we have here the cerebrum <coughs> okay so the largest part of the brain that we have here is the cerebrum and the one below is the cerebellum now what are the function of these two parts okay so the cerebrum is the part where all the processing of the information possible not only processing of information this is where our emotion uh personality consciousness are produced okay so this is the cerebrum so it contains all our memories and other stuffs Okay, it processes the hearing, all right? So it's, it processes all the things that we have heard, we have seen, we have uh, felt, and we have tasted, all right? So we have smelled. So all those things are processed in the cerebrum. That is why it is the largest part of the brain. Now, this part that we have right here, which is the cerebellum, is the part that is uh, responsible for controlling the body's uh, balance or, or orientation, okay? It, uh, it tells us where is the left, where is the right, where is the forward and backward, where is the up and down. Okay, so it tells us the balance, right? So the balance and coordination of all body parts, okay, that we have. Okay, so that is the two parts that we have right here, the cerebrum and then the cerebellum. Although uh, it's, it is not seen here, okay, uh, inside the cerebrum, we have here the midbrain, which controls all the all the required processes like uh, hormonal secretion and other stops. All right, the breathing or the involuntary functions are inside also. Uh, it is not shown here, but there is what they call the brain stem. All right, so the brain stem controls these involuntary functions like breathing, heartbeat, something like that. Okay, so these are the parts of your brain. All right, so as you can see, there are a lot of uh, neurons, or not, not neurons, okay, sorry for that. There are a lot of uh, blood vessels found in the brain, okay? So that is the reason why the brain is an organ that consumes a lot of energy, okay? So this is an organ that consumes a lot of energy. So that is why uh, it is important to always make your brain stay healthy and uh, fit, okay? Yeah, so having enough sleep and uh, eating good food will help your brain a lot. Okay. Next one, uh, we have right here the dissected, right? So the, the dissected uh, portion of the brain. So the brain has two parts that we have right here. OK, 
Okay, so we, this is the gray matter. Right? So this is the gray matter which is made up of cell bodies of neurons. Okay? So next one is the white matter. So the white matter that you have right here is made up of nerve fibers coming from uh, neurons. Okay? So these are the two things that comprises your brain. And uh, these two portions of the brain has its corresponding uh, functions. Okay? So... Okay, if you compare the brain within uh, with the size of the heart, okay, so almost they are uh, the same. Okay, so that's the overall uh, look of the brain. Okay, so if you will going to uh, learn, uh, you will uh, if you are watching some forensic uh, forensic studies, right? So forensic. Uh, forensic uh, studies about some people who are murdered uh this thing all right so this they study more about the brain if uh the person died with brain injury or something like that how the person died something like that okay so they they do autopsies all right so they do autopsies yeah all right so this is the spinal cord Okay, so the spinal cord that we have right here is uh, completely uh, enclosed with a certain um, certain film that we have right here. Okay, so as you can see here, we have here the white matter. Okay, so the white matter. And the white matter, as I've said earlier, it is made up of nerve fibers of neurons. And the one at the middle, this H over here, is the gray matter. All right, so that, that is the gray matter. So the gray matter is made up of cell bodies of uh, neurons. Okay, so that is the spinal cord. And this is the backbone in which the spinal cord was uh, extracted from it. Okay, so the backbone is the one that protects your uh, spinal cord. By the way, the one that protects the brain. Now, if you take a look at the brain, the one that protects the brain from uh, injury is the skull. Alright, so that's the reason why our skull is hardened in order to protect what is inside of it, which is the brain. That is, uh, the brain is a delicate organ. It should be protected by something that is hard and that is the skull. Alright, the spinal cord is somehow protected by vertebra, alright, uh, or the backbone. Okay, so also the spinal cord is very uh, delicate or is a very delicate organ and it requires a lot of protection from the backbone okay now these two organs in the central nervous system are very important okay uh, in terms of importance brain is more important than the spinal cord now if the spinal cord is damaged you will still live all right you will still live but you are paralyzed Okay, you cannot feel uh, your lower, you cannot use your lower extremities anymore. Okay, now whereas where if the brain is being uh, damaged, okay, if, if the brain is being damaged, uh, if you're lucky, uh, some of your body parts will not, uh, will be able to move. Okay, so especially those people who have uh, suffered stroke and uh, similar thing about stroke. Okay, so... They were likely to have a paralyzed half of their body paralyzed or not or sometimes uh, it leads to death okay so that is why so that is why uh, you should uh, take importance or you should take care of your brain all right or you can take care of both of them okay but most of most of the important or one of one one of the most important part of the central nervous system which is the brain requires a lot of uh, taking care okay so that is the central nervous system okay let's go back to our uh, diagram so that is the central nervous system one of the components of your nervous system Okay, so let's go now to the peripheral nervous system. Now, what is on the peripheral nervous system? Now, on the peripheral nervous system, uh, most of the most of the uh, noticeable parts that we have right here are the nerves, nothing else. Okay, so the spinal cord and the brain uh, obviously is not belong to the peripheral nervous system. Just like your computer, 
Just like your computer, it has a lot of peripheral parts like keyboard, mouse, printer, monitor, webcam, if you have. Alright, so the other one is a Wi-Fi router or something like that. Okay, so those peripheral parts are very integral in the computer's function because these peripheral parts can either do input or output function. Example, if you want to see your work, okay, in actual, you can use the printer. Okay, so what is coming out of the printer is the output of what you have input inside the computer using your keyboard, your mouse, your webcam, or even your Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi router, something like that. Okay, so that is the peripheral nervous system. Same thing as the peripheral nervous system, the nerves also acts as the one that is a uh, passageway of this input and output functions of our body. Okay, so let's discover what is on the peripheral nervous system. Now, in unlike a uh, central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system is not protected by any hardened organ. Alright, any hardened organs. Alright, so which means that these nerves that we have talked about earlier are exposed to toxins and mechanical injuries. Alright, that is what they are designed. Okay, so these nerves are designed to do those. Okay, so these nerves are designed to do those. Alright, so what's the purpose why they are not protected? Okay, so you can pause the video and then leave the answer in the comment section and then play it again. Okay, so the reason why they are not or why they are not protected by a bone, it's because this is very important that they must be uh they are they are they must be left exposed in order to gather some information on, on what is around us. Okay, in order to gather this uh stimuli. Okay, the change in the environment around us. Okay, so if you will going to put these uh, nerves inside a bone, it will likely not to do its particular function. Okay, which is to detect the changes in the stimuli around us. Okay, so like light, chemical, right, uh, pressure, temperature, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the purpose why they are left exposed, okay, in the body. Okay, so now, the peripheral nervous system is somehow composed of uh, sensory nerve receptors. Okay, most of them are sensory nerve receptors. And these sensory nerve receptors are found in different sense organs. Okay, so there are five sense organs, so you know that one already. So, the first one that we have right here is the thermal receptors. Okay, so these are the thermoreceptors. So the thermoreceptors are, uh, they respond to the changes in temperature. Right, so temperature. And most of the thermoreceptors are found on the skin. Okay, although there are some few found in the tongue or something like that. So most of them are found in the skin. Now, the importance of the thermoreceptors, it gives us an idea when to shiver and when to sweat. Okay, so the temperature uh, detection is very important because if you don't detect the proper temperature, your body can uh, react, you will die. All right, next one is the photoreceptors. The photoreceptors are receptors sensitive to light. All right, so as you can see, what part of our body is sensitive to light, which is the eyes. Okay, so these are the photoreceptors. Okay. Next one, we have the chemoreceptors, which are the chemicals. Okay, they are sensitive to changes in chemical composition. Alright, so chemoreceptors are found mostly on nose okay, and uh, tongue. These are very uh, integral part of this uh, sense organ because without these chemoreceptors, we will not be able to smell or even taste the food. Alright, next one, we have the mechanoreceptors. Okay. The mechanoreceptors are uh, receptors sensitive to changes in pressure. Okay, so when you touch an object, the pressure changes on your fingertips are detected by these uh, receptors. So most of them are found in the skin and some of them are found in the ears. 
So the pressure of the sound wave that is passing through your ears are also detected by mechanoreceptors. All right. Also, there is a special kind of receptor in our body called the nociceptor. They are the detectors of pain. All right. They are the detectors of pain that can, uh, that can cause your body. Now, why is pain very important? Why is pain very important? It is very important because it is required for our survival. Now, if you take ignore or if, if you ignore pain completely, you will likely to end up dead. Okay? So, the reason why we are having pain, alright? The reason why there is pain is for us, our body to be warned. Alright? It is to give us warning that our body is injured and if we don't, if we don't take uh, notice of that, it will uh, lead to death. Okay, so it is. It serves as a warning. Okay, so if you have pain, whether it is a uh, toothache like that, or uh, a mosquito bite, all right. So or anything that is similar to that. Okay, it tells you that your body is in trouble. Okay, so it, it is very uh, important. So these are the nociceptors, and nociceptors are part of the sensory nerve receptor network present in the peripheral nervous system. Now, uh, let's take a closer look on the different nerves found in the peripheral nervous system. So we have right here the free nerve endings. So some of them are free nerve endings. So most of these uh, free nerve endings are found in the skin. Okay, so most of them. Uh, we have here some uh, encapsulated uh, nerve endings. So most of the thermoreceptors are they look like this, all right? So basically, they look like this. Next one, we have the sensory uh, cells that we have right here or the receptors that we have right here. So most of these are found in the tongue, eyes, all right? So this type of nerves. And also, another type of nerves are, okay, like this, the one that we have right here. It has an attachment, so a fiber-like attachment, which gathers, uh, it gathers information. Okay, so this uh, type of cells are found mostly on ears. Okay, some are on the nose. Okay, so these are the different nerves. Okay, under the peripheral nervous system. Okay, so the nerves under the peripheral nervous system is capable of doing the reflex action. Right, so the reflex action. Reflex action is an involuntary uh, process that doesn't require any conscious thinking at all. Okay. Example of this is when you touch a hot object. When you touch a hot object, the tendency is you will remove your hand away from that uh, hot object. Okay. So, what is that particular uh, situation all about? That situation tells us that our body did already the reflex action. Okay. So, how is, it, how is that possible? So, um, it doesn't require the help of the brain for you to think any further what are you going to do. Your body automatically decides, alright? So your body or the spinal cord to be exact, automatically decide what to do on that certain situation that it encounters, okay? Especially if, you, uh, if your body is uh, experiencing a lot of pain already, so your spinal cord is enough for, for it to do its uh, reflex action. It doesn't require this. Okay? So, the emotions that you feel after the removal of your hand while touching the hot object is the work of the brain. Okay? So, just to take note, in the reflex action, you need to do the removal first of your finger before the emotion. Okay? So, like, ouch, ow, or something like that. Okay, so those emotions are already the manifestation that the impulse which is felt by the, re the receptor, okay, which is felt by the receptor is already reaching the brain. Okay, it's already reaching or it's already reached the brain. Okay, and you already did the reflex action. Okay, so that is the reflex action. This is a uh, involuntary uh Alright, so this is a rapid and involuntary movement that doesn't require any conscious 
to. So, reflex action. Now, the one that you have right here, this, uh, this direction that you have right here, minus this one, so do not include this one, this arc that you have right here is also known as the reflex arc. Alright, so in the reflex arc, it involves different things. We have the sensory neuron, the interneuron, and the motor neuron. Again, so we have here the sensory neuron, the interneuron, this is the interneuron, and finally, we have the motor neuron. That's how the reflex arc works. Okay, so reflex action and peripheral nervous system, they are uh, one of each, uh, one of the concept under this uh, topic that we have right here. Okay, so under the peripheral nervous system, there are two uh, locations of the nerves. We have the cranial nerves, which is located on the brain. And now if you are, go if you are thinking that all reflex action are controlled only by the spinal cord, you are wrong. Okay, some of the um, some of the reflex action is being controlled also by the brain, like blinking of the eyes when the light is being uh, light is being bright. All right. So if the light is bright, uh, our eyes uh, our eyes will do its uh, reflex action by blinking. Okay, our eyelids. Okay, will do its reflex action by blinking in order to de do to decrease the amount of light entering our eyes. All right, next one is sneezing. Okay, sneezing is a reflex action. If something gets in your nose, you will likely to uh, eject that one or eliminate that one in order not to affect what is inside your nose. So that was uh, controlled by the cranial nerves. All right, so that was controlled by the brain. And these reflex are uh, possible because of these cranial nerves. All right, so if someone touches your face, you will feel that one. The cranial nerves are uh, responsible also on that one. All right. So, uh, since we have talked about the reflex action earlier, so all things that happen in the lower extremity, all things that is happening on the lower extremities of our body is controlled by the spinal nerves. All right. So, that's the peripheral nervous system. Okay, again. We have the central nervous system and we have the peripheral nervous system. Now, furthermore, if you go down beyond the peripheral nervous system, we have the sensory division. Now, the sensory division includes the sense organ. Okay, five of them. All right. Next one, under the peripheral nervous system also has the motor division. All right. So, it includes the skeletal muscles, uh, smooth muscles. All right, so it, 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 includes, uh, it includes those neurons that control those two types of muscles or two kinds of muscles that you have right there. All right, so we have uh, also the cardiac muscle that we have. Okay, so under the motor division, it is also further divided into two, which is the somatic nervous system and also the autonomic nervous system. Now, what is the difference between the two? The somatic nervous system is made up of neurons that is especially designed to control skeletal muscles. Where are the skeletal muscles found? These are muscles that are found attached to your skeleton. Okay? To your bones. Okay, like the one that we have right here. Yeah. Okay, so this one, it contains skeletal muscle. This uh, one that we have here contains skeletal muscle. So this one also contains skeletal muscle. So... These skeletal muscles are designed to do voluntary actions. Okay, so when you are walking, moving your hand, okay, so these are voluntary actions. Whereas the opposite, which is the autonomic nervous system, this is an involuntary, uh, this, this group of nervous, or this division of the nervous system under the motor division is especially designed to control the involuntary movements of our body. So when we say involuntary movements, this doesn't require, uh, it doesn't require any conscious thought. Okay, in order for these uh, organs to move. Okay, example of this is heart rate and breathing. Alright, so imagine if breathing is voluntary. Okay, imagine if breathing is voluntary. What will happen to us? Okay, so imagine you can stop your uh, breathing 
for a merely uh, one minute and then uh, breathe again after one minute. Okay? So because you thought that breathing is uh, should be paused for a while. Okay? So, okay. So good thing that we have right here, it, the breathing is involuntary. Not only that, digestion. Okay? So digestion, urination is also an involuntary uh, movement of our body. And they are controlled by autonomic nervous system. So let's discover what is under the autonomic nervous system. So autonomic nervous system regulates certain processes of our body, such as, as I've said, blood pressure or heart rate and rate of breathing. Okay, so there are a lot of involuntary movements in our body. And the most important here is the autonomic nervous system controls these processes autonomously. Unlike the somatic nervous system, Unlike the somatic nervous system, it controls voluntarily, alright? So, it controls voluntarily. This one controls this organ's function autonomously without any conscious effort, okay? So, that's the reason why we have autonomic nervous system, alright? So, we have under the autonomic nervous system, as you, as you have seen on the diagram earlier, it is divided into two divisions. So we have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic division. Now, these two divisions functions differently. Alright, so the sympathetic division are attached, are attached. Okay, these nerves are attached to the thoracic nerves that you have right here. Okay, thoracic nerves and some of it in the lumbar nerves. Okay. Now, whereas the parasympathetic nerves are connected to the cranial nerves and the sacral nerves that you have over here. Okay, so these are the connections of this uh, division of nerves that we have. Now, what is the differences? What is the difference between parasympathetic and sympathetic division? Now, to make it simpler, the sympathetic division is used by the body when you are stressed. Okay, when you are stressed, okay, it gives the body, uh, the body the advantage to do certain activities, alright, to do certain activities under stress. Okay, for example, uh, it dilates pupil in order to enter, uh, to allow light, more light to enter our body. We have uh, heart rate acceleration, okay, accelerated heart rate. So what is the importance of that? In order, uh, in order for our our body to perfectly uh, working during stressful times, uh, the muscles should be supplied with a lot of glucose and a lot of nutrients in order for it to function during those uh, situation. Next one is uh, it increases breathing in order to allow more oxygen to enter the body and more oxygen to be delivered to the muscles. All right, it inhibits digestion. All right. Now, in order to conserve energy, in order to conserve energy, it, it will inhibit the digestion of food uh, for a temporary period of time. Okay. That is why it also stimulates the release of glucose from the liver because our body needs a lot of energy during stressful times. And where can we get energy? From the glucose. All right. Next one is uh, since you are stressed, your adrenal glands will produce adrenaline in adrenaline in order for uh, your body to get a lot of energy that it needs. All right, so it relaxes the bladder so that you will not be able to urinate during straight, uh, stressful times. And also, in order to conserve the energy and dedicate it to the muscles or allot it to the muscles, uh, the production of sperm and egg cells are also inhibited for temporary period. Okay, so that is the work of the sympathetic division. Now, after the stressful times, okay, after that stressful situation, your body will come back to normal or it will go back to normal. So all of the things that was uh, changed by the, the, by the sympathetic division will be normalized by the parasympathetic division. Okay, so again, from the dilated pupil, it will be constricted. All right, uh, the heart rate will slow down, okay, because there's nothing to stress about. 
Okay? Uh, the breathing will also uh, slow down. Uh, it goes back or it it works, uh, it makes the digestion works back to normal. Um, it stimulates the gallbladder. Alright, so, so it decreases the release of a lot of glucose in the body. Alright, so it goes back again, the, it normalizes again the, nor, the con normal function of the bladder. And for the sex organ, the normal uh, production of sperm and egg are continued. Okay, so this is the opposite of your sympathetic division. Alright, that is why it's called para. Alright, so opposite. Okay, so okay. So the question here is, why do we need all right, why do we need to divide the autonomic nervous system into two divisions? Why not we have uh, only one division? Okay, so that's the question here. Why do we need to divide the autonomic? What is the advantage? All right, the question is, what is the advantage of having a two division for the autonomic nervous system? Okay, what is the advantage of that? Okay, so you can put the, your answer in the comment section. Okay. So you can put your answer in the comment section. Let me know what is your answer. Okay, so with that, with that question, okay, we need, okay, what is the advantage of having two division in the autonomic nervous system? One is for it to normalize, again, what is being increased, all right, or even decreased, to normalize it back once again. Okay, if you have one division, okay, so if you have one division of the autonomic nervous system, for example, you have a sympathetic only, your body will be constantly at, at stress and it will not stop. Alright, so it will not stop. Okay, it will, con be conti it will continue and uh, you know what will happen to you, you will die. Okay, so you will die of continued stress. Alright, and or even you will not be able to reproduce. Okay, so if you have only a sympathetic division, more so if you have only a parasympathetic division, what will happen to your body? So if you are, uh, if you encounter any uh, trouble, all right, if you encounter any trouble or any uh, stimuli that will trigger the stress, okay, if you encounter some stressful events in your life, your body will not react to it. Your body will not react to it, whether uh, whether that stressful times is dangerous or not. Okay, if it is dangerous, alright, so if it is dangerous, your body will not react to it as if there's nothing going on. So, you will likely to die. For example, uh, you are chased by a uh, rabid animal. Okay, for example, you are chased by a criminal. Something like that. So, you are being chased by a criminal and you have only a parasympathetic division. So, what will happen to your body? It will do nothing. Okay? It will do nothing because the parasympathetic division is not designed to do that one. Okay? So, that is why that is the advantage of having these two divisions under your autonomic nervous system. It controls one another. Alright, it controls one another and it normalizes what is being increased or being inhibited. Okay, so that's the answer to that question. What is the advantage? Okay, having both of this division controls one each other. Okay, and each of these divisions are important in every situation, especially in stressful situation. The sympathetic is very important, but if you don't have any stressful situation, the parasympathetic division is also important. Okay. So that is why, all right, so that is why the autonomic nervous system responds by stimulating the process usually through the sympathetic division. So remember, it is the sympathetic division that usually acts first. Okay. The sympathetic division usually acts first. And it will be inhibited by the parasympathetic division. Alright? So, it will be inhibited in the parasympathetic division. So that the sympathetic division will stop working if it is not necessarily needed. 
Okay, so that's the work of the autonomic nervous system. And these two divisions that you have right here will only work depending on the environment or the stimuli that you have encountered in your external environment. Okay, so it only depends on that. It doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't work. Um, it doesn't work on its own. It must be or there must be a reason why it will work. Alright, so most of the time, the external environment contributes to that. Okay, so that is the autonomic nervous system. Alright, so we are now completed. Uh, we are now completed the diagram that we have right here. So, the question is, how does your nervous system processes the information? Okay, how does it work? So, if you're going to follow this flow chart that we have right here. So, the first thing is, the information is gathered by the receptor. Yes, it always. The sensory organs are the first uh, group of organs that is needed here. Without the sensory organ, there will be no uh, things or no information that will be gathered. Okay, that will be processed by your central nervous system. Now, these things are converted into electrical signal. Alright, so from light, from chemical, from pressure, uh, from sound waves. Alright. And whatever it is, it will be converted into electrical signal. That is the currency inside the that is the currency inside the nervous system. And it will be transmitted to the peripheral nerves to the central nervous system. In which the central nervous system will, the, will do all the process of interpretation and it will be transmitted back to the effectors for proper reactions. Okay, for proper reactions based on what is interpreted by the brain. So this is how the nervous system works inside your body. Okay. Now, uh, to sum, okay, to summarize these things that we have right here, this is the pattern that is followed always by your nervous system. First one is input, sensory from the sensory organ integration done by the central nervous system and motor output which is done by the effectors okay uh, most of these are the motor neurons that are attached to the skeletal muscles or even with the smooth muscles okay things like that okay so these are the pattern or this is the pattern that our nervous system usually follows okay now if you are familiar with this pattern this is the same all right, this pattern is the same as how our computers and smartphones work. Okay, there must be an input coming from the peripheral devices like keyboard, Wi-Fi router, um, um, mouse, okay, or touchscreen in smartphones, and it will be integrated by the CPU of that computer or smartphone, and the CPU will um. Uh, Okay, we'll transmit it back to perform an output, whatever output it is. It, it, it may be a form of video, it may be a form of sound, it may be a form of a word processor, something like that. Okay, so that is the output. Okay, so our nervous system works similarly like what our computer does. But the thing here is... Okay, computers are inorganic and our body is organic. That's the only difference. But they work similar to each other. Now, let's answer the question that we have right here. What is the role of the nervous system? Okay, now if you're going to trace back, okay, if you're going to trace back, before we discuss the nervous system, you should understand first what is the characteristic of light. Okay, so you, you have encountered that one in your lower levels. Okay, so the characteristics of life, these are the ability to obtain nutrients, right? So reproduce, so on and then so forth. But there is one characteristic of life in which the nervous system is uh, responsible. Okay, without, uh, without the nervous system, this characteristic of life will be rendered impossible. Okay, and that is sensitivity. Okay. Sensitivity. Sensitivity is be able to detect the change in the stimuli, all right, in the environment, okay, and create appropriate action based on that changes in stimuli. 
That is sensitivity. One of the characteristics of life. If you are a living thing, okay, if you are a living thing and on this planet, you should be able or you should have this characteristic. Okay? Sensitivity. And sensitivity is controlled by our nervous system. Alright. Now, to check up if you understand everything what I have uh, taught here in this uh, video lesson. Okay, so you can pause the video, alright, while you are answering this uh, mini quiz that we have on this video lesson. Alright, so this is check up quiz. Okay, you can answer this one in any uh, paper that you have, sketch paper that you have right there. Alright, so the first, uh, the first question that we have uh, over here. What organ system directs our body reaction to the world and also controls most of the most of our internal function? All right. So digestive system, nervous system, respiratory system, or reproductive system. Okay. So choose your answer. Okay. So the answer to this question is the nervous system. Okay. So did you got it right? Okay, next one. Number two. What are the two components of the nervous system? Alright, is it the peripheral and autonomic nervous system? Autonomic and somatic nervous system? Sensory and motor divisions? Or peripheral and central nervous system? Okay, the answer here is the peripheral and central nervous system. Okay, so did you get it right? Okay, next one. The third is this division of the nervous system controls your body during stressful situations. So we have parasympathetic division. Is it sensory division? Is it sympathetic division or the central nervous system? Choose your answer. Okay, the answer here is the sympathetic division, right? So, you did listen uh, great on, uh, on my discussion earlier. Alright, next question, number four. Which of the following are organs belong to the nerve central nervous system? Okay, so these are cranial and spinal nerves. Is it sensory and motor neurons? Is it brain and spinal cord? Is it spinal cord and cranial nerves? Select your answer. Okay, the answer here is the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so the last question. What do you call the ability of an organism to detect external stimuli in, in turn creates a reaction on it? Okay, so we is it sensitivity? Is it reflex action or stimulus or even integration? Okay, select your answer. Okay, the answer to this question is sensitivity. All right, so, okay. So if you got five out of five in this checkup quiz that we have right here, so you did listen all throughout the lesson that we have on this uh, episode of our video lesson. Okay, so you did listen attentively on my uh, discussion on this video lesson. All right, so with that, okay, with that, that ends up my video lesson about the nervous system that we have in this episode. So I hope you did get a great value out of this lesson. So if you did uh, get uh, value out of this lesson, so you just hit the like button on this video, all right? And if you have comments and suggestions, just uh, don't hesitate to put it down in the comment section below. All right, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So it is on the screen already. So don't forget to subscribe and it will help me a lot in making uh, a lot of science related videos in the future. Okay, special shout out to my... Uh, to my grade 10 students who is uh, going or who are watching this video. So, 
study hard guys and that ends up my video lesson for today all right so that ends up my video lesson for today i'll see you next time guys peace out peace out guys peace out